OU President Bourne goes on the road with an education sales tax petition. OU earns a high ranking on an unsavory list, and Oklahoma's most infamous tornado town takes steps to protect students from the coming storms. This is OU Nightly. Supporters of OU President David Bourne's campaign for a penny sales tax are ramping up pressure for their initiative. Patrick Smith brings us the details on efforts in Norman. After kicking off the petition on Tuesday, Bourne held a town hall meeting open to the public in Norman Thursday night. Citizens were invited to ask questions and sign petitions. The first signature on the petition was from Oklahoma Teacher of the Year Sean Sheehan. Sheehan is also advocating for the petition at each petition stop. As a teacher, this petition means hope for public education in our state. You know, we've endured a lot of cuts since 2008, and uh, I'm a teacher, my wife's a teacher, I have a lot of teacher friends, and it, it's not a good look right now. The, the forecast for education in our state is kind of dismal. Supporters need 124,000 signatures to get the petition on the ballot. In the first three days, the petition has received over 6,000 signatures. Supporters believe this is the best solution for the teacher crisis in Oklahoma. There is such a dire need. Teachers are leaving our state. They cannot make a comparable living from surrounding states. And so we must do something to keep our teachers in Oklahoma. Supporters have until May 16th to get all the signatures needed. Patrick Smith, OU Nightly. For more information about the petition, go to okchildrenourfuture.org. Weapons, drugs, and other assorted contraband, that's what corrections officers found in a raid this week at an Oklahoma prison. 25 officers conducted the surprise three-hour sweep of the Jefferson County Detention Center. Among the list of illegal items, the officers uncovered half a pound of drugs, 31 cell phones, and two weapons. The SAE racist chant continues to haunt OU. The incident has landed the university on a worse university list. Shea Woshion has more. This video has been shown countless times around the country. And now that the University of Oklahoma students seem ready to move past it, a list has surfaced that places OU among the worst colleges for free speech. The Foundation for Individual Rights in Education named OU among these colleges because of President Derry Barnes response to the SAE incident. Would I be happy if they left the university as students and were no longer our students? You betcha. I'd be happy. We don't have any room for racists and bigots. The list criticizes Barnes' decision to expel the students because their racist chant is protected by the First Amendment. But OU students don't seem to agree. I don't think that OU was wrong to expel the students. You have a right to say what you want to say to a limit. However, some students understand that even racist words are protected by freedom of speech. Whenever they suspended the students from OU, I think that was a fair thing to do. But at the same time, I do think that was kind of against free speech. Boren was not too pleased with OU's inclusion on the list. He said, of course, every group is entitled to free speech, but their criticism is outrageous. President Boren says free speech is one thing, but racism should never be allowed on a college campus. Shea Oshinyo, OU Nightly. OU was one of two schools in Oklahoma that made the list. The survey also criticized the University of Tulsa. Well, it's been pretty dry and windy so far today. It's kind of the perfect storm for a wildfire almost. Really? Yeah. Joe, what do you have for us? Yeah, guys, that's right. Unfortunately, though, um, the, we have been very dry across the, across the state. In fact, this year alone, we've only had three-tenths of an inch of rain. Compared to the, our normal for this time of year, we're supposed to be seeing two inches of rain, but we are only at three-tenths. So very dry conditions out there, and temperatures out there right now are in the 70s. Taking a look there, 73 degrees in Oklahoma City in Norman, 74 in Lawton, and 69 up there in Woodward. Overall, a beautiful day. Winds are a lot weaker than they were yesterday, so it's a great day to be out and about. Maybe go for a bike ride, go for a run. And this evening, that's going to continue as we go 
taking a look at the evening planner, looking at that in the 60s, dropping through the 60s. Windows open tonight. It's going to be a great night to sleep with the windows open, folks, unless you have allergies, of course. For your headlines, though, we're going to take a look at that weekend forecast, a cool down on the way, and I'm talking rain chances, which will definitely help out with that drought situation out there when we return coming up in the full forecast. Wow, it's kind of like winter just, you know, completely missed us this year. I know, it's great. It's <laughs> super exciting. Thanks, Joe. With severe weather season right around the corner, more public schools will begin building storm shelters at all schools in the district. The citywide effort was approved after a deadly tornado hit Briarwood and Plaza Towers Elementary Schools. In the aftermath, more voters approved a $209 million bond to build the shelters in all schools that don't already have them. Cleveland County Commissioners Court voted this week to issue the first of those funds. Probably the safest place for the kids to be is actually in one place at the school. So the storm shelters that would be there, that was going to be the safest place for them, rather than, okay, there's immediate threat, releasing kids to go home. That tornado in May of 2013 killed 24 people, including seven school children. And coming up on OU Nightly, police are boycotting Beyonce's concert in Miami. Plus, the United States carries out more airstrikes. Oklahoma bridges are some of the worst in the country. The American Road and Transportation Builders Association ranked Oklahoma third in the nation for most bridges in need of repair. The association states nearly 10% of all U.S. bridges were deemed structurally deficient last year. OU Nightly's Devin Gadbury joins us now in the News Center with the latest on Libya. Devin? Yes, and an American warplane struck in an Islamic State training camp in Libya around 3.30 a.m., killing at least 30 Islamic State recruits. The airstrike targeted a senior Tunisian operative linked to two major terrorist attacks in Tunisia. The Pentagon believes the target was killed in the attack, but has not yet confirmed it. In Uganda, police arrested Kiza Besije the main opposition presidential candidate. He was trying to enter a police station claiming that voting was rigged. Official Ugandan polls show the current president leading with 62% of the vote, but Besege's independent count shows the opposition ahead by 7%. And Miami cops plan to boycott Beyonce's April concert. This is in response to the performer's controversial reference to the Black Panther movement in her Super Bowl halftime performance. We're not going to put up with her anti-police message. We're not going to voluntarily show up there and sign up to work for a woman, a woman that has portrayed a message that is anti-police. Some police groups believe that visuals in Beyonce's latest music video threaten police officer safety. And we end the week on a sad note. Harper Lee, author of To Kill a Mockingbird, died today in her hometown of Monroeville, Alabama. She was 89. She was one of America's most loved authors. Thanks, Devin. And still ahead on OU Nightly, a rare site in Yosemite has visitors confused. Park go goers only get to see this site two weeks out of the year. Hey guys, welcome back to OU Nightly. Well, we are looking at a absolutely beautiful weekend in store. Here's where we are right now with the weather story. We have this area of low pressure just off to the west there and that's giving us that very high cloud cover starting to move in here as we head through the afternoon hours today. As we go through the weekend though, we're going to look at mostly cloudy skies tomorrow. This warm front that you saw earlier, we go back here, you can see this is going to move north and then this is going to bring a cold front behind it. So temperatures tomorrow are going to be relatively warm before a cold front moves in here Saturday night into Sunday time frame. And that's when, we can, that's when we're going to see those rain chances start to increase as we head through the rest of the period here. But as you take a look again, there's that uh, by Sunday afternoon, we're gonna see that cold front well through our area and wind switching over to the north. That's gonna drop us back into the 50s, so closer to average for this time of year for Norman and the Oklahoma area. For overnight lows though, for this evening, 
we are going to see them in the 50s, 54 degrees in Oklahoma City, 55 in Norman and 53. So if you're in central and eastern Oklahoma, it's a safe bet that you can probably sleep with the windows open tonight. I love that fresh air smell as you wake up in the morning. It's just there's nothing like it. If, if you're up in the panhandle, though, might be a little chilly. Might want to have the heat on if you're up in Guymon. Woodward still going to be a little chilly out there. But for your day planner for your Saturday, there's those cloudy skies I was talking about earlier. 59 degrees by that 8 a.m. hour. But again, those those winds are going to be coming in from the south and bringing in that mo warm, moist air. So it's temperatures are still going to be above average. 73 degrees by noon and 75 by that 4 p.m. hour. So again, overall looking like a great day. Just a few clouds to deal with. Highs tomorrow across the state in the upper 70s and lower 80s out there. 78 in Oklahoma City and Norman, 76 in Ardmore and 81 in Lawton there. So again, folks, it's going to be a great day. Get out and enjoy it because Sunday is the not so nice part of the weekend there. As you take a look, though, at the uh, seven day forecast, 78 on Saturday as a cold front moves through here Sunday morning time frame, 65 degrees is our high for Sunday. You can see that downward trend here. Monday, we're going to keep those shower chances in there. Just a slight chance, but by Tuesday is the next big chance for rain here as we head through the next several days. Uh, however, as we head into the rest of your um, rest of the work week, we're looking at temperatures in the 50s. Overall, not looking too bad out there. But again, look at Friday, though. Friday cools it down to 48 degrees, so that's our next front that's going to come in. But Tuesday's looking like it could be a very wet one, which is going to help out the drought in the area. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Joe. I'm so excited for that nice weekend. Absolutely. Oh, man, it's just no rain. It's, it's really weird to see that, you know. I know. It, it, it doesn't feel like February. It really doesn't. It doesn't. It, <laughs> it feels doesn't. like we're just like in April right now. I'll it's, take it, though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No problem at all. Thank Great. you, Joe. Absolutely, guys. In California, Yosemite Park goers got a glimpse of quite the optical illusion. Don't be alarmed. Yosemite National Park is not catching fire. The spectacle happens two weeks every year when the rays of the sun hit the falls just right. Park rangers call the illusion Firefall. You know, that's very cool. It's also the centennial for the National State Parks this year. So Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's really exciting stuff going on. That makes me want to go to a national park. we got plenty in Oklahoma. It's a, such a beautiful state. Exactly, and a beautiful week. Well, that's it for news this Friday night, but don't leave just yet. Big Friday Sports is on deck. OU's men's basketball team is in the middle of a two-game losing streak. Hunter McKee is here. Hunter, will the team back, break out of that slump soon? Well, Anna, I don't quite have the answer to that, but we'll talk about the Sooner shortcomings and their upcoming schedule as well. As a look back at Coach Kruger's busy week, Big Friday Sports is straight ahead. Welcome aboard, that's Hunter McKee, I'm Carson Williams, and this is OU Nightly's Big Friday Sports. Today we've got a live look at baseball's opening day, more Sooner Sports this weekend, and Thunder assistant coach Monty Williams just make just might make you cry. But we begin with the slumping men's basketball team. It's a big week for the Sooners as they travel to West Virginia after a pair of losses against Kansas and Texas Tech. That's right, Lon Kruger and company have to hope the next seven days are a lot better than their last seven, which were pretty busy for the Sooners, Coach K. The week got started with enthusiastic students lined up to watch college game day in action at Lloyd Noble Center. The ESPN stars put on their show for OU fans in anticipation of the rematch of the game of the year. And after a disappointing first half, the Sooners and their fans nearly got revenge for that uh, triple overtime loss in Lawrence last month, but that really fell just short, and OU fell back into a third-place tie behind KU and West Virginia. But maybe more worrisome was the fact that the Sooners' red-hot outside shooting had turned ice cold. We'd like to be able to continue to shoot over 50% like we were three or four games ago, but, you know, uh, but, yeah, teams are not going to let you do that, you know, comfortably. So we got to gotta figure out, you know, some other ways to score, and, you know, we're not a club that throws inside a lot, so I don't know what exactly that means at this point, but we got to keep moving and, and creating better looks for each other. 
Despite the loss, Coach Kruger's schedule didn't slow down a bit. On Monday night, he visited the set of Sooner Sports Pad and hung out with the hosts and studio audience. And then it was off to Lubbock for a Wednesday night game at Texas Tech. The heavily favored Sooners were upset 65-63 by the Red Raiders after another cold shooting performance. Coach knows there's no help on the way down the stretch run. They'll need to get the job done with veterans they've been leaning on all season. Well, it's not like we're going to manufacture low post guys that can score from the block, but uh, uh, you know we got got to get a little better movement, got to get uh, a little more more patience, maybe offensively. We're we're uh, you know again we're not going to go a long way away from what we're what we've done to get to this point. Uh, you know people are going to try to guard us a little better. We've got to win some battles and set better screens and use screens a little bit better and and uh, you know finish some opportunities. The women's basketball team travels to Lawrence, Kansas this weekend to take on the Jayhawks. The Sooners are coming off a loss at West Virginia and are looking to rebound tomorrow afternoon in Fog Allen Fieldhouse. The women won nine of the last ten in Lawrence, and the Sooners are eight and six in Big 12 play and are favorites in this contest as the Jayhawks are losers of 16 straight games. The, women, the men's and women's tennis teams are looking towards a busy weekend with some key matchups. And here are the games. The men hit the road for the short drive to Tulsa to, to battle the Golden Hurricane on Saturday. And the women are in Norman for two matchups, taking on Oregon tonight and Iowa on Sunday morning. Tomorrow, both men's and women's gymnastics will be in action. The top-ranked women will be in Athens, Georgia, taking on the 10th-ranked Bulldogs. And the number one men's team will be in Las Vegas for the Winter Cup. And coming up on Big Friday Sports, Carson and I will give you... We'll give you our take on the Kevin Durant versus Russell Westbrook debate, and we'll have a live look at baseball's opening day. Stay with us. Welcome back to OU Nightly's Big Friday Sports. We have OU Nightly's Blakely Durham live at L. Dell Mitchell Park to give us a look at the Sooners on opening day. Blakely? Thanks guys. Here the Sooners are down currently 2-1 to one in the bottom of the fourth inning to Northeastern. Now this is the first time the Sooners are playing on their new turf field that was put in for this season. And head coach Pete Hughes talks about the opportunities that this new field will bring to the team. We need the weather to cooperate to evaluate. And fortunately now we have a new facility that allows us to practice every single day with that with, with the syn synthetic turf uh, surface. Some of our young players are, are good players, you know. It's, they just don't luck into playing at the University of Oklahoma. You've got to be super talented to play here. So we, we think those guys are going to bring enough to the table to protect Sheldon. And, and the other thing is, with maturity, Sheldon's going to be able to make better adjustments than he has in the past. This is the first of four games for the Sooners playing against Northeastern this weekend. They have a doubleheader tomorrow at 1 p.m. and at 4.30. They also play Sunday at noon. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Blakely. The Thunder get their stretch run started tonight with a game against the Indiana Pacers, but will do so with heavy hearts. Just yesterday, assistant coach Monty Williams eulogized his wife, who was killed in a car crash last week. Hunter, it's always a tough transition from stuff like that, but we've got a really hot topic to talk about today. ESPN's Jamel Hill and Michael Smith debated on their show this morning, his and hers, Russ or Katie. They said Russ was better. If you had to pick one of the two, who are you taking? Okay, so, I mean, this is a great argument. I've got, I've got Kevin Durant, and mainly because Kevin Durant is just, he's a better shooter than Russell Westbrook. And we always talk about the best players in the NBA, yep. you want the ball in their hands. And the thing about it, when the Thunder need that shot to, to take that big lead or to, you know, the last shot to win a big game, they give it to Durant because Durant does it all the time and he's got that, you know, he's just got that edge to him. No, you're definitely right. Kevin Durant is definitely one of the best late game shooters. But Russell Westbrook right now is putting up Oscar Robertson-like numbers. You know, he's got 24.1 points per game, 10 rebounds a game, and 7.6 assists per game. He's averaging nearly a triple-double. And, you know, we haven't seen that this season. Russ, this season, eight triple-doubles, KD only one. And since Russ has been in the league, he's got 27 triple-doubles. KD only seven. So Russ is able to do things KD's not. The thing about it, though, is that Durant is never cold. You know, I mean, yeah, you're right. No, yeah, we're talking like just from behind the the, the three point line. I mean, right. Westbrook, I mean, he he's he does a great job and he makes a lot of shots. But Durant is rarely cold. He's always hot from behind the three point line. And this is a scoring league. It's all about scoring. Yeah, you know, I mean, Russell Westbrook, he's 
he's led the league in, in scoring, and he's second in steals, or no, leading in steals this year, second in assists. So I think I mean, he's just able to do more, you know. Right. So, well, that about wraps it up for us. Thanks for hanging with us today on Big Friday Sports. On behalf of our OU Nightly team, we leave you with some of college basketball's best dunks of all time. Have a great weekend, everybody. Good night. Goals ahead. Lane's on the other wing. He finds oh! 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 Stackhouse streaking in on Park. Reverse oh! dunk is good, and he gets fouled by Park. Oh, my goodness. What a dunk by Stackhouse. I mean, this is a runaway train right here. He tried to make the fitting end of the ballgame. George, look at that!